of missions is what I'll be dealing with as I have been asked to deal with tonight. The Holy Spirit that is the power of missions. I read from Micah chapter 3 and in verse 8. Micah chapter 3 and in verse 8. It says, but truly, I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. But truly, I am full of power. Tonight, my objective in this teaching is to understand the power of the spirit in missions and also to understand our access to that power. Understanding the power of the spirit in missions and then understanding our access, what to do to get at that power. Whatever has happened tonight briefly is just a foretaste of what God expects us to see on the mission field and expects us to see in the assignment of the kingdom. It was Catherine Kuhlman who once said, the secret of power is the Holy Spirit. The secret of power is the Holy Spirit. And of course, we just saw that now. In Micah chapter 3, verse 8, it said, truly, I am full of power. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 and in verse 7, the Bible said, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. Summary is, the spirit of God is the spirit of power. Speaking in tongues is not the only assignment of the spirit, but it is speaking in power. Speaking in power. Walking in power. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So the Spirit of God is the secret of power. Is the secret of power generally but specifically he is the secret of power for kingdom missions. He is the secret of power for missions. He is the secret of power for evangelism. He is the secret of power for discipleship. He is the secret of power for soul winning. Acts chapter 1 verse 37 and you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. In Jerusalem. Then Judea. Then Samaria. That is talking of missions now. Then to the uttermost parts of the earth. That is talking about missions right now. Is the secret of power. In Luke chapter 4 verse 14. We saw the life of Jesus. The Bible said he returned. In the power of the Holy Ghost. And his fame spread abroad. They began to hear of him and know about him everywhere as the power of the spirit came upon him. His fame spread abroad. Paul the apostle speaking about his missions experience and the power of the Holy Ghost. Very critical in Romans chapter 15 and in verse 18 to 19. Romans chapter 15 verse 18 to 19 he said, For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient. He sent me as a missionary to the Gentiles. But there were things he did through me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and by deed. Verse 19. He said, Through mighty signs and wonders by the Power of the spirit of God. So that from Jerusalem. And round about unto Illyricum. I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. I started from a spot. And I went everywhere. By the power of the spirit. Beloved tonight. The secret of power. Is the Holy Spirit. And the secret of power for missions. Is the Holy Spirit. Tonight, I want to turn my attention to the specific power. How is the spirit of God connected to missions as far as power is concerned? What does the Holy Spirit do to help me to fulfill mission 
by his power. Number one, it is the life transformation. The life transforming power of the Christian man or woman. The Holy Spirit carries the life transforming power for the Christian man or woman. I am not talking about the people we are preaching to yet. I am talking about the missionary first. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and in verse 18, he said, we all beholding us in a glass with an open face, the glory of the Lord, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory by the spirit of the Lord. What does the Holy Ghost do to me? It changes me into the image of the Lord. So that I can carry that image to my generation. A man is not permitted to take people where he has not been. You are not permitted to show people what you have not seen. You are not permitted to teach people what you don't know. You can't take anybody where you haven't been. An untransformed man cannot transform others. An untransformed life cannot transform others. So the first thing the Holy Ghost wants to do with my life and with your life is to transform you first. No wonder Paul the Apostle said in the book of Galatians chapter 1 and in verse 15 to 16. He said when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. To reveal his son in me first. That I might preach him among the hidden. Immediately I confer not with flesh and blood. The assignment of the Holy Ghost is to reveal Jesus in me first. So that out of me Jesus can be revealed to my generation. So the Holy Spirit carries the life transforming power. For the Christian man. And the Christian woman. The highest preaching of the missionary is not the word of the preacher, but the life of the preacher. The highest preaching of the missionary, the highest preaching is not the word spoken, but the life lived. It's not word spoken. No wonder I heard that St. Augustine said, preach the gospel always and when necessary use words. The meaning of that is, your life is more of the preaching than your words. And this is what the Holy Ghost does to the, to the man who receives the Holy Ghost. He transforms your life first. Number two, the Holy Ghost carries the power for the impartation of love and passion for God and his work. Love and passion for God. The Holy Spirit irrigates the heart with love for God, with passion for God. Romans chapter 5 and in verse 5. He said the love of God. He said and hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad. In our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Which is given unto us. And of course in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. We just saw that God has not given us the spirit of fear. But of love. Of power of love. The Holy Ghost makes you to love God effortlessly. He makes you to love what God loves. He makes you to love God like love souls like God loves souls. The ordinary person may come to church for any other reason. But you go because you love God. There is a passion in your heart. There is a passion in your heart. There is a love in your heart that is imparted by the Holy Spirit. Men and women who carry the Spirit they don't struggle to pray. They don't struggle to fast. They don't struggle to worship. They don't struggle to study the word. Because there is a saturation. There is a deposit of love for God. A deposit of passion for God's work. He becomes a love slave. Like Paul the apostle. Every time you love God. You love his sheep. Simon. Son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than this? Do you love me? Confirm it. 
by feeding my sheep. John chapter 21 from verse 15 to verse 17. Do you love me more than this? Confirm it by feeding my lamb. The Holy Spirit and missions. He saturates my heart with the love of God. He saturates my heart with passion for God. Passion for souls. Passion for the lost. Passion. And I'm all out. What does the Holy Ghost do? Number three. The Holy Spirit carries the power for the impartation of boldness. Boldness to stand in kingdom assignment. Boldness. In Acts chapter 4 verse 31 the Bible said the disciples when they were, had prayed the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and spake the word with boldness. Boldness, audacity, fearlessness to speak for God, to stand for God. A real man of the Holy Spirit has nobody under heaven to fear once it comes to kingdom assignment. He has nothing under heaven to fear once it comes to kingdom assignment. The Holy Spirit makes you Take risks, risks, calculated risks on the behalf of God. The Holy Ghost make you a natural risk taker. You are ready to live in the arena of danger for God. You are ready to live in the arena of danger for God. Provided you have an impartation of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say aloud, amen. Ordinary people take a lot of care. Where care is not necessary. They take a lot of care. But Holy Ghost people take a lot of, a lot of risks. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego said. We are not careful to answer you in this matter. We are not careful at all. We are ready to take these risks. We are ready to take these risks. Tonight I believe. There are risk takers. That will be risk takers on behalf of the kingdom. In the various campuses here. And in the land of mission. Somebody shout the loudest. Amen. Number four, the Holy Ghost has the power for the unveiling of scriptures. The unveiling of light and insight from scripture. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 all the way to verse 10. 1 Corinthians 2 9 to 10. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things. Yeah. The deep, deep things of God. The Holy Ghost gives us access to light. He guides us into depths of truth. He guides us into depths of revelation. Why is light important? Light important because it's important because when you, you are going into missions, you are going into what is called the dark places of the earth. The dark places of the earth that are filled with the habitations of cruelty. According to Psalm 74 verse 20. This filled with the habitations of cruelty. You need light. And what is the light? The light shineth in darkness. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehends it not. We need light to answer darkness. Not English. Not grammar. We need light. We need light to handle darkness. And that light comes by the agency of the Holy Spirit. I prophesy, I announce to someone here, light is coming in the name of Jesus Christ. Number six, five, the Holy Spirit carries convicting power. The power that imparts weight towards convicting power. The power of conviction. Imparts piercing power to the word. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 37, when the Holy Ghost came, 
those who had Peter, they were pricked to their heart. And they said unto Peter and unto the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Power of conviction. Power that makes the world weighty. In Psalm 45 verse 5, he said, your arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies. Whereby the people fall under thee. The Holy Ghost turns the world into missiles. Arrows in the hearts of the enemies of the kingdom. If it turns the worlds into arrows, into missiles. I read in the ministry of people like John Wesley, Charles Giffney. They said in those days when those people spoke words, it was as if arrows were released in the hearts of men. And the people would just drop as if they were hit by a gun. The Holy Ghost convert words into arrows. It is not enough to, sp to speak mere words. It is important to speak weighty words. It is important to speak fired words. Barbed arrows in the hearts of men. What is the assignment of the Holy Ghost number six? The power for the production of proofs and evidence. Proofs. You shall receive power. Out of the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses. The word witness is the word proof producer. Evidence producer. You shall be witnesses. You shall be proof producers. That was the kind of proof Philip produced when he went to Samaria. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 and in verse 5 all the way to verse 8. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached unto them Christ. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many. That were possessed with them. And many taken with palsies. And that were lame were healed. What was the outcome? Verse 8. And there was great joy in the city. A whole city. Literally turned to God. By the agency of proofs. Is God speaking to anybody here? Say a loud amen. How many, law, how many law, lawyers or law students are here? Have you done evidence? In law, it is said that in the court of law, evidence is the end of arguments. When you lack evidence, you have to make very long arguments. You have to argue and argue and argue and argue your case. But when there are witnesses with real evidence, not hearsay evidence, real tangible evidence, you call up the witnesses, summarize your presentation. And get judgment in your favor. That is what the, the God told us. He used the legal word. For those who will preach the gospel. He said we shall be witnesses. Evidence producers. Proof producers. The man of God. T.L. Osborne. Went to India as a missionary. At the age of. 18 thereabout. 19. And he was in India for three years. And there was not one person that gave their life to Christ. Not one. He couldn't succeed to lead one person to Christ. He said he returned back to India. As a miserably failed missionary. I mean back to America. And while he sat. And he prayed. And he pondered. He attended a robber's crusade. Attended another crusade. And he saw things happening. The blinded eyes opening and all manner. And he said, he heard like a thousand voices telling him, this is what Jesus did. This was what the apostles did. You too can do this. In the name of Jesus, he locked up himself. After prayer, Jesus appeared to him, empowered him, and he returned back to the same India where he failed. Returned back there. He was there for three years. And he printed little flyer. The blind shall see, the deaf will hear, the lame will walk. Jesus heals. And he said about 50,000 Hindus 
goodies and all those kind of gathered about 50,000 of them. He told them, he said, I am going to pray for the people here in the name of your Hindu God. And I'll pray in the name of the God of Buddha. And I'll pray in the name of Jesus. Can we all agree that the name in which the people are healed is the name that we shall follow? Everybody say, let us agree. It was agreed. He said, can you give me somebody you consider a very sick person? They brought a man about 60 years old, deaf and dumb, stone deaf from bed. Can't speak, can't hear, 60 years old person. And the man stepped forward there. He called the name of the Hindu God. Nothing happened. He called, that was the first time I saw somebody do anything like that. He called the name of the Buddha God. Nothing happened. He called the name of Jesus. Bam! The ears opened. The tongue was loosed. He now said to everybody, how many of you, go, go ahead and give another praise. How many of you would want to give your life to Jesus? Lift up your hand. I'm sure some people lift up their, lifted two hands. He said there was not one person on that ground that did not lift up their hand. For three years, he couldn't convert a fly. In just a moment of evidence, in a moment of proofs, the godless Hindus gave their life to Christ in mass. We are not wiser than the master who said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. Jerusalem, Judea, uttermost part of the earth. We saw Paul the apostle who talked about mighty signs and wonders that accompanied him to all the nations, the places he went. And how he preached the gospel, evidential gospel. I prophesy to somebody here today, you will never preach an evidenceless gospel anymore. You believe that, shout the Lord and say amen. John Gillick went to South Africa. In, the, in a season where there was a lot of terrible affliction going on. Went with the power of God as a missionary from America. Within the period of five years, he planted 625 congregations. Six to five. Within five short years. A hundred thousand recorded healings within those years as well. Of all manner of afflictions. He routed South Africa with gospel of the evidence as a missionary. It is time that to begin to look to us evidential gospel not just traditional mission work in most places if we follow the traditional approach it might take a thousand years and yet we won't be able to get a hundred people or a thousand people but if we move by the power of the spirit and confront the territorial powers of the land they shall bow somebody say a loud amen Somebody say the loudest amen. The seventh thing I will say tonight that the Holy Ghost does is the power of revival explosion. Revival explosion. This is not just conversion of souls now. This is not just even discipleship from, from evangelism to discipleship that is on, but taking over a climate with revival. That happened in Samaria in Acts chapter 8 verse 5 to 8 where we saw just now. That happened in Acts chapter 13 and in verse 44. When Paul the apostle stepped into a city and the Bible said by the next Sabbath day, the whole city, almost the whole city came out. Acts chapter 13 and in verse 44. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. The whole city that is that was not just normal normal traditional conventional work that was an explosive revival work it is said that within the first hundred years of the gospel the 50 percent of jerusalem was fully christianized by the power of the holy spirit i see something happening in our generation you believe that shall the lord say amen i believe that the time is going to come shortly where one person will step into a village under 24 hours the whole village is on fire for christ where somebody will step into a community step into a city step into a nation a 
and under 24 hours, the whole nation. Somebody shout, I believe it. Say it louder. I believe, I believe, I believe. We went to the country of Malawi. President of the country. Vice president of the country. Inspector general of police. Or, or any ministers of finance, ministers of this. All were in the meeting. All. When it was time to pray, the president went on his knees. His wife went on, on her knees. That compelled everybody to go on their knees. To hand over the nation to God. We are trusting the Lord that the time will come where overnight a whole nation is quaking because a fireman arrived. A firewoman arrived. A Holy Ghost man arrived. A Holy Ghost woman arrived. And when that happens, the balance is discipleship, establishment, stability. Somebody say aloud, Amen. And we do not have eternity to fulfill this assignment. We only have a limited time. We heard yesterday that the night cometh when no man can walk. We have only the daytime to walk. And that daytime is not forever. And we need to do a very quick walk. We need to fulfill our life assignment within our time allotment. We need to fulfill our life assignment within our time time allotment there is an allotment of time and that is why we need that sense of urgency for this assignment to be fulfilled and not tarry at it forever somebody say a loud amen what is the secret of the holy spirit in our lives number one understanding our inadequacy without the holy spirit you just understand your helplessness, inadequacy. Lord, I, I may have gone through a school of missions or a school of ministry. I may have gone through a Bible school. I may have done, been converted from childhood. But Lord, I am fully aware of my helplessness, inadequacy. I don't have the power to convince a soul to believe in God. I don't have that power. I am inadequate in myself. Because if God is ever to increase in man, man must decrease. I am inadequate in myself. It is our helplessness that provokes his almightiness. Our helplessness. Our sense of helplessness. He said, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may obtain help, mercy, and find grace to help in time of need. Understanding our inadequacy. Number two is desperation. For the fullness. Of the spirit of God. Desperation. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst. After righteousness. For they can be filled. They shall be filled. God will not bother you. With what does not bother you. He will not bother you. You can never have insight. Where you don't have interest. Desperation. The reason why we don't see God at the same level is because we don't have the same level of hunger. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. They hunger, they thirst. They are yearning. Sometime my wife asked me and said, when are you going to eat breakfast today? I said, I'm not sure. When are you going to eat? I'll let you know when I'll eat. Sometime in the evening I told her when, when I'll eat. Said, and I told her for the next until further notice I am not sure if I'll eat before this time daily particular time of the day. Tomorrow I'm not sure. Because I was so hungry there was something I was looking for. When the hunger lifts I will eat the food. The hunger didn't lift in one week. It didn't lift in one month. It didn't lift in three months. It didn't lift in six months. It didn't lift in even one year. Anything that we are trusting God for is possible. It depends on how desperate we are. Personally, I, 
a point came in my life where I felt like, I mean, I, I, I cannot be speaking on behalf of God without that God standing to confirm that he sent me. I can't be making apologies on behalf of God. I can't be standing to defend a God who does not stand to defend himself along with me. Am I communicating? I was very, very desperate. If God be God, let him be God. If Baal be Baal, let him be Baal. And the God that answers by fire, that answers with evidence, let him be God. And I'll be lying if I say the pursuit has ended. It's ongoing. Am I communicating at all? Desperation. Desperation. Number three is submission to the direction of the spirit. Where he leads me, I will go. Submission. As many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. God will only walk with the one he guides. He doesn't walk generally and walk everywhere. He walks with people he guides. As many as are led in verse 14, then in verse 19, the endless expectation of creature waits for the manifestation. If you are going to, his, to see his manifestation, you must follow his direction. Submission to the direction of the spirit. We saw the direction in verse 14 and we are seeing the manifestation in verse 19. How do I experience the Holy Spirit? Number four, praying abundantly in the spirit. Paul the apostle said, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 18, he said, I thank my God that I pray, I speak in tongues more than you all, the whole of the Corinthian church put together. Many of us in the Pentecostals and evangelical uh, uh, realms, we, we pray in the spirit just occasionally. I speak in tongues more than you all. Paul the apostle that we emulate. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18, he said, praying always with all prayer and supplication. With all prayer and supplication in the spirit, praying always, praying always with all manner of prayer and supplication in the spirit. In 1 Thessalonians 5 17, he said, pray without season. Pray like you breathe, like you breathe. The only thing you do without stopping is breathing. Pray the way you breathe. Hallelujah. And I believe that when we come to that point like Paul the Apostle, then maybe the way handkerchiefs and aprons left the body of Paul and cast out disease, if we are able to follow Paul's example, then we may be able to see some dimensions of evidence and dimensions of success. The most successful missionary apart from Jesus was Paul the Apostle. It's confirmed. And if we are to be as successful, as successful as Paul, we are to do what he did. Tonight, I welcome somebody to that realm of missions with power. Are you ready for that? Lift up your right and say, Father, I am ready and set for your power. Stand up on your feet everywhere you are and lift up your hands. It's a commissioning night and so we are trusting the Lord for a commissioning, a release of power like never before. Lift your hands and lift your voices and begin to thank the Lord for the word you received. Lift up your hands and lift up your voice. I have seven minutes, eight minutes to trust the Lord for something to drop. You are going to trust the Lord for something to drop on you tonight. You are going to
to trust the Lord. Lift your voice and speak and say after me. Say, Oh Lord, oh Lord, I am before you tonight. I am before you. Tonight. I trust you. I trust for you. an impartation. For an impartation of your power. Of your power. The power. The power of the Spirit. Of the Spirit to fulfill. To fulfill my assignment. My assignment in the in the land. In the land of the living. Of the living. I receive. I receive that power. That power now. Now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. in the name of Jesus Amen. before we, we go forward anyone here tonight I know we have had a week long conference but you know your life is not right with God before you can receive power and move into that dimension you need to make your ways right with Jesus anywhere you are you want your sins forgiven you want today to mark a new day for you quickly pick your bibles and step forward here father before i receive this power i want my life to change i want my sins to be forgiven i don't want to assume that i am i am all right with god i want my life to be accurate with god quickly come forward here quickly keep coming 